Uh, at this point, I want to invite Jan uh, also bring you forward here to, to the spotlight. I mean, you, you've been investigating these issues using other methods as well. What can you tell us in terms of how, what do we know about the connection between the global tax haven industry and climate and environmental issues from your perspective? Um, I think we know very, very little, unfortunately. Um, there have been only very, very few studies and one have been, you have been mentioning at the beginning um, where the Stockholm Resilience Center, and I was also a little bit involved in that, um, looked at the Amazon, but also in fishing. Uh, global fish, fisheries is, a, is an important issue. And in that particular um, study, for instance, um, only 4% of all the registered uh, fishing vessels in the world have been flagged in a tax haven jurisdiction. But 70% of those vessels have been found to be involved in some kind of illegal fisheries. Um, so, so this is a really good spotlight of um, that there's really so much more uh, work to be done by researchers, by NGOs, by, by journalists, etc. It's just the tip of the iceberg, I think. But if, if we consider, I mean, the, the wider implications of tax havens, they have been known for quite a while. I mean, it, it's not it's not totally new, of course. We, we know more than we did yeah. a couple of years ago. So why are we seeing so little political movement on those topics? Like what, what, what's, stopping, what, what's stopping the world from just closing down tax havens? A very yeah. naive question, but can you elaborate? Yeah. On that? yeah. Um, Precisely as Linda just said, it is a very complex and difficult topic. Mm. And, and for the, I think for, for most people, they, I mean, by now everybody has heard of it and has a certain feeling that there's a lot of money, um, but it's very opaque. You're, you've heard certain, you know, certain names, but it's very complicated, complicated and complex. And so the, the general public has a certain interest to do something, but it's kind of very you know, fragmented and, and dispersed. And on the other hand, the, the tax haven industry, the jurisdictions, but also um, the specialized lawyers, small law firms, big law firms from mostly from the US and the UK, um, also the big four accounting firms to a certain extent, um, they have a very concrete interest in that. And so, and they have a lot of resources as well. So it's, it's one of those classic, classical examples where uh, one party has a lot of resources and can mobilize a lobby and the general public is kind of dispersed and, and fragmented. And that is why it's so important that uh, organizations such as uh, the Tax Justice Network, for instance, Oxfam and, and, and many others uh, are doing you know, this really great work they've been doing in the last years. That's really crucial, I think, to get forward. So, so it sounds to me from what you're saying that it's transparency is needed, but it's not going to be enough to see changes in this. There's something more needed. Yeah, I think what we're seeing now also with the, the issue of, of Russia, um, the, the, crucial, um, the crucial issue here, I think, is political will. Because as you said, we, we've known for quite a long time that it is an important issue, um, but the, the political will was simply not there. To, to come up with really effective and far-reaching measures. We've seen kind of an incremental improvement during the last decades, improvements here and there. That's good, but not really a you know, significant move forward. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but now with Russia and the, the war in Ukraine, uh, immediately you see this political will to do, to do significant um, improvements. Uh, interestingly, I mean, there is always, I think there's also an important issue. Um, tax haven sounds like a very, you know, a large group of countries, um, but really it's, it's like, a, I don't know, 10 or 20 jurisdictions are really at the core. And many of those are actually under British sovereignty, for instance. Um, and so the, the kind of, from legal perspective, but also from sovereignty perspective, if just very few countries would get their act together, uh, we could do a lot. And in the UK, even now with the Russia crisis, there is some kind of hesitancy um, to really come up with far-reaching measures. Mm 